These people that live in their cars, they're dangerous. They can't be trusted. They have left their communities behind. They're poor. They're destitute. They're desperate. They're mostly dirty hippies who just can't get jobs. These people are also in it for themselves. They're selfish, uh, which is why they live in a van down by the river. There was some stigma. I had people that were upset with my decision. Some people called it selfish, that I was being selfish and, you know, only thinking of myself and not thinking of, you know, other people and what their needs are. When we started this lifestyle, it rocked everyone's world in our community from home. They thought that we were like, are you broke? Do you need help? Is there something wrong? Why are you doing this? Why do you want to quit your job? You have everything you need. These are all things that I thought before, and I do not think them anymore. I think a lot of times people look at us who are not living this lifestyle. They kind of think uh, we're dirty, grungy, freeloading hippies. These are things that people have told me. These are things that I myself have thought in the past. We draw the attention. My, my bus is blue. It, it stands right out in a sea of brown. I think there is a stigma attached to this lifestyle. And I think that comes from the fact that, you know, it has that hippie stigma, you know, the old Woodstock buses, for instance. I believe there's a stigma attached to it. And I believe that there's a stigma from the outside sources and inside sources. I've seen uh, like VW buses. They expect it to be this certain group of, you know, kind of the, the hippie lifestyle. But what they think is you're gonna show up in a bus and there's gonna be 20 people walking out of it. These are actual thoughts that I've had of people that live in a bus or a van or a car. I do not think these things anymore. A lot of people from the outside kind of look at it as like, oh, it's just like a vacation or it's just kind of an escape mechanism to um, you know, get out of that, that nine to five rut that people get stuck in. I have always been curious about the schooly conversion movement. Uh, I do believe there is a movement in the U.S. It's changing people's lives in ways I think they never would have recognized or realized, you know, in the beginning. It's the growth of it too that I think is really much in. Yeah. It just blows our mind, yeah, you know, like where, where it started. Even if you just look at the YouTube space, when we first started there was a handful of people and now if you type in van life into YouTube there's thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. And like I think yeah. RTR last year had like 5,000 people. Yeah. Now they're saying there's over 10,000 this year. Yeah. I've always been curious to produce documentaries and to drive around the states and shoot cool events and things like that way before it was even thought of as a movement. And now we're smack in the middle of the movement itself. So I decided to crunch the numbers. Uh, I wanted to buy a bus, build it out, and live in it for a year and actually find out how much it costs, if it's economically viable compared to a normal year, say. Uh, I, wanted to, I wanted to actually find out if it was worth doing. And I wanted to make a film about my experience on the road. I wanted to see what it would take to go from living a traditional home life in America to living one where the road is literally uncertain. And I even took my dad along for the ride.
What I found completely and forever changed my opinion of this lifestyle and the people who lead it. In the end, I, I found that this lifestyle is safe. Safety was a big concern when I first started because I am a single solo female. When you can think of any kind of horror movie simulation in your brain, but it, I mean, what are the odds, really? <laughs> it's a big, big world. <laughs> we haven't had any situations that I didn't feel safe. I mean, just as much, someone can break into your house just as much as they can break into your bus. I found that there's a community here so we met all these guys that we're with probably a week ago, and it hasn't really been that long. Everyone's probably connected, what is it, like seven degrees of separation? Yeah. It's probably like a two or three degree separation. Like, yeah. And you, you see it right here for yourself, this connection of all these vehicles around us. Right. All these people are connected from another person. We knew one person, which was Dean, and then he kind of brought us into the group, and now we're friends with everyone here now. I don't know, we have 20 buses around us. Yeah. People keep bringing it. They made a friend somewhere, and they'll bring him in. Community is everywhere in this lifestyle. Just having some sort of similar interest is all there, all there needs to be for somebody to want to get to know you. And the people through whatever circumstances or means end up in this lifestyle find something about it that heals them and that helps them. Out here people are living and loving and strong and healing and um, <laughs> caring for each other. It's a beautiful thing. I'm so happy out here. <laughs> In the end, I've realized that people do actually find a community here and not just relationships that are meaningful to themselves, but also to their families and their new friends. A lot of people, I think, had that sense that the the girls wouldn't be socialized out here. And, you know, if you could look around and you see literally thousands of, uh, you know, uh, van dwellers and bus dwellers and, and whatnot, uh, there, there's no shortage of social interaction. Same thing with the kids, the, the girls are both finding that they're just able to run around outside, uh, meet up with all kinds of people, they become more social with adults. I found out that this lifestyle is not isolating at all. In fact, I have met more people on the road than I ever would have living in my four walls in an apartment somewhere in some city. You make really good friends that you don't see uh, for months at a time, and then it's just like we picked up yesterday. Um, like the couple of the guys that are here that I haven't seen since Schooly Palooza. The, the community side of it is awesome. People have been so great. They come and offer help. It's not like where we lived in a house for two years and never spoke with our neighbor across the street. Like we've talked to everyone here. Because you just walk by and you start talking to them. We all have something very in common, which is the rubber tramp stamp. <laughs> I've realized that people leave this world that they found to be broken and sick and antisocial for one in which they can heal and find their own path. You are not only more allowed to be yourself, but you are actively encouraged to be more of you. And I've seen people go to other people, you know, go ahead, let them loose, you know? <laughs> I So, yeah, being allowed to be more you is an understatement. And I realized that a wide variety of people get into this lifestyle for a wide variety of circumstances, be it from the housing crisis, to a personal sense of curiosity, to having more time to spend with their family and their kids. I had a really good job. I was living in London, uh, running a, a large airport for a European airline as their airport manager. Uh, and that came with the perks of a nice income. I went to the, just at the stage yesterday and they asked who was out of debt. And like 90% of people rose their hand. And that was, that's like a huge part of why we did this. We got out of debt 
we were living a cookie cutter life, yet now we're on the road and we feel like we have more than what we need. I think that the tired, worn out stigma of having to be creepy or destitute or completely antisocial is just totally misinformed. I think there is a stigma, but not among us. I think with like, you know, the, the status quo, you know, you get the, 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 the creepy van stuff, but there's none of that here. Nobody, that's just, I don't know, people are going to say that because maybe they don't have the courage to do it or it's scary or it is a little bohemian. I think there may have been a time in America where that label represented the greater whole of people who live in their vehicles, but I don't think that label can be applied anymore. People do have community. They have united in a common goal. These people are tired of paying already wealthy banks and real estate moguls gobs and gobs of money for skyrocketing rent or upside down mortgages. They are charitable and they give of their time, themselves, their money, uh, and they do everything from feed the homeless to clean up the desert. There was a whole group of people on these lands, I think there's about 50 of them, and they yeah. just picked up a bunch of garbage yeah. of people that come and dump out here, yeah. and you know, people that are respecting the land. And there are a lot of good people yeah. in, the, in the community. I think people in the community have time to do stuff. Exactly. I just came back from the California fires. The people that were uh, uh, caught up in that and lost their homes, lost their cars, lost things. And I spent three weeks there and was able to help a lot of people in a lot of unique ways uh, because I didn't have to be at a job somewhere. So right when we started traveling, we wanted to do something that was meaningful yeah. to us and give back to these places that we visited. So we just decided we would give them a hot meal, give the homeless people a hot meal. And we wanted to try to feed a thousand people uh, in the cities that we travel to. Yeah. So we used our social media um, as an opportunity to raise money. And now, yeah, now we're at 1,400, yeah. uh, so we haven't stopped. Yeah. These people gather together in, in, the, in their own sense of community. Um, they leave their doors unlocked at night. They tell their kids to be home when the sun goes down. I think I may have seen a mobile device come out of a pocket a handful of times throughout the entire year that I was filming this experience. And that was normally actually just to take down my contact information. Basically, this lifestyle is a lot like how I grew up in the 80s. Low tech, plenty of time, get there when you get there. If somebody can't reach you on a phone, they come find you. These people are debt free. They have plenty of time to spend with their friends and their families. They're realizing that their retirement isn't going to be there when they get old, at least not the way it has been and the way it's changing currently. And I think they're taking their lives back from a government who would be perfectly happy to watch them work until the day they die. I like to say, I'm not homeless, I'm homeless.